Our mateys, man the cannons, hoist the sails, board that ship and take their treasure. Captain, I think we've been hit. Arr, you get on that boat and get some bellies full of cutness so you be walking the plank. Ain't no crew of mine. Big little scratch. But Captain. Arr, don't he but Captain me. You get in that cannon and you get yourself on that ship or else you'll be hearing from me hook. So we've run out of cannonballs. Arr, then get the gunpowder from the crow's nest. And blow them to Davy Jones' locker! The rest of you turn the sails and prepare to board! Hurry! on and gotten our ship sunk! I'll be having your heads for this! You best hope the sharks get you before I do! Sir, if we just prepared the... Ye be questioning unworthy beard again! That's it! Get over here, you good-for-nothing pirate! What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are here live, twitch.tv slash God Squad Church. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Pastor Susie. I'm the lead pastor here at God Squad Church. Incredible to have you in the house. Hey, before we head into our message for tonight, I want to let you guys know about a very, very, very important announcement, okay? We do something once a year. We do it every month in November because it is the month to be grateful and the month to be thankful. We do something called our night of appreciation because we believe the Bible teaches this very, very important principle that we need to give honor where honor is due. So we take one night every year to give a huge amount of love, thanks, and appreciation to all of the incredible men and women who are behind the scenes that serve God Squad Church in so many different areas. You might never see their faces. You might never see their name in chat, but there are so many people that are serving in our prayer teams, in our graphic teams, media teams, social media teams, hype teams, people that are serving in our individual game ministries like World of Warcraft, with our Horde, with our Alliance, people that are on our Mod Squad. That you got to understand, the Mod Squad is dealing and ministering to people that are coming in 24-7 from all around the world. And there are so many people, I mean dozens and dozens of people that are serving this ministry. And I just believe that principle strongly. That we need to give honor where honor is due and to give appreciation where it is due. And next week, we're going to take the entire service and the entire, especially portion of the message from my wife and I to give our heartfelt thanks to this entire community and all those that serve and really those that serve you. If you have in any way, shape, or form been a beneficiary, beneficiary of all that happens here at God Squad Church, you have reason to be thankful. You have a reason to be grateful. And I want to challenge you more, almost more than any other night of the year. Will you be here next week to show these people how much you care about them, how much you appreciate them? And I want to encourage you to come ready next week to spam the hearts in the chat. Next week's night of appreciation is going to be incredible. If you do watch my personal stream later in the month, I do also do my personal appreciation for my own moderators, my own uh, the people that watch my stream, my subscribers. But this Saturday is going to be just for those that are serving for God Squad Church. I will do my stream at a later date this month, which I'll get a date to you guys. But I want to encourage you, be there next week so we can give honor and show appreciation where it is due. If you're joining us for the first time, you're coming in on the final message of a series we've been in really almost for the past two full months that we've entitled Little Holes Sink Big Ships. And really the premise of the entire series has been that when it comes to a ship, what will sink it is not always a ginormous hole that everybody notices. That in every ship, if there's even the smallest of hole that's bringing in the smallest amount of water, if that hole is left unattended to, for too long, that more water over time will keep coming in and coming in and coming in. And that no matter how big that ship was and how small that hole was, after a while, that even the smallest of holes will sink, even the biggest of ships. And we've been talking about our integrity and been talking about our characters, individuals, that sometimes what I believe that can be character flaws in our lives are not always the most obvious ones. It's not always the people that you meet that you talk to them for three seconds and they're just blatantly arrogant or blatantly rude. And you're like, hey, this person's got some issues they've got to work through. It's not always the obvious ones. Sometimes in our hearts, it's, it's the small, subtle character flaws that we might have that we might not think are a big deal. But when we've left those unattended to over time and over years, that I believe that even those small holes will sink the ship of your success, 
of becoming and achieving all that God has created you to be. So over the past few weeks, we've talked about several different things. We've talked about things like pride. We've talked about things like um, gossip. We've talked about things like laziness, which at times is something we all can relate to everything we've spoken about. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't heard those messages, make sure you subscribe to our God Squad Gaming YouTube channel to check those out. But I want to encourage you to go take a listen to them because I think they'll be a blessing to you. But tonight, I want to take a little bit of a different perspective as we finish up our last night together. Tonight in our final message of Little Hole Sink Big Ships, I want to talk about something that I don't necessarily view as a character flaw. I don't necessarily view as something that is wrong with our integrity or the way that we carry ourselves, but I do believe it has something in common with all the flaws we've talked about. Because although everything we've discussed up until this point may seem very different than each other, they've all had one thing in common, that if left unattended, they will prevent you from becoming all that God has created you to be. But there's one more that I think that we can relate to as people, and that's very common in the gaming community, something that will prevent you from believing and becoming all that God has created you to be. And tonight, I want to wrap up our series talking about the whole of insecurity. If we'll be honest with ourselves, every single one of us have been insecure, whether it's been a lifestyle for us or it's been simply moments. And taking this idea of insecurity, I want you to understand that I do not view insecurity as a lack of integrity, but rather a lack of identity. That every single one of us, if we do not understand who our identity is in, who we belong to, the power that God has given us, that we can be all that God has created us to be, and we can do all that God has created us to do, if we do not have that as our foundation, if we do not realize that I am not doing life by myself, but I'm doing life under the power that God has given me, the word and the guide that God has given me, that I don't, I don't need to be afraid, that I don't need to fear, that I don't need to doubt myself because my identity is not just in myself. My identity is rather in God and the strength he gives me. If I do not have that identity, it will leave me feeling insecure. Every single one of us, I believe, at some point or another, have struggled with this. I remember being back in Bible college, and it was our senior year, and I had, you know, was just engaged, and I was about to get married. And of course, you know, when you're engaged, you really want to impress the fiance. You want to look good to the future misses. And it was time to get ready for what was called our senior sermons. Now, we had a class, essentially. I won't give you the big, long, fancy word for it. But it was a class that essentially we learned how to preach. It gave you certain preaching styles that you could use or not use and different things like that. But your final, your final assignment for the class was to preach a sermon, but not just to preach it to your class, to preach it to the entire college campus. All the professors, all the faculty, all the staff, all your friends, literally every breathing human on the whole campus. Can I tell you, it was the most terrifying moment for many of us seniors and the thing that was the worst was they put me on the very last day, literally the last day of the semester. I was the second to last preacher. They put two people per chapel service, which we had every day. And it was me and my friend, Brian. I was second to last and he was very last, but I was in the very last day. You know what that meant? That meant that I got to watch every other senior preach their sermon, knock it out of the park. And then came me. I could watch people that were articulate in the words. I got to watch people that were absolutely incredible. I got to watch one guy from the name of Matias. He was a Hispanic man who literally all through our college experience, he would literally go to class Monday through Friday. And without exaggeration, on Friday, he would hop on a plane, fly to places like Africa, preach in front of thousands of people and come back and sit in class on Monday morning. These were the kind of people that I was going after. These are the kind of people you want to go before, you know what I mean? But these are not the kind of people you want to follow. Because How in the world am I going to keep up with that? Can I tell you that insane amounts of insecurity begin to flood my heart. And I begin to think things that maybe you thought, man, I'm not qualified to do this. Man, I'm not good enough to do blank. Man, I'm not cut out to do this. I don't have what it takes to be like, that guy, man, I don't have the wisdom to raise these children. 
man, I don't have the words to be able to get through this interview. And insecurity just began to flood my heart. And maybe you've had seasons in your life, situations in your life, where for whatever the situation was, you begin to doubt yourself. And insecurity began to flood your heart and you begin to tell yourself things that I told myself. I don't have what it takes to do this. There's no way that I can make it through this. Is there, any, is there anyone that's like me in the chat that's had those moments where you just believed, I'm just not good enough? Insecurity, I believe, is one of the biggest things in our lives that the devil wants to put in your heart so that you doubt who God has created you to be. Because the devil knows if you truly become secure in your identity, believing I belong to God, I'm his, which means that he's given me his power, which means that I'm not operating life by myself. The devil knows if you truly begin to believe that ain't nobody that can stop you. Ain't nothing that can get in the way of what God wants to do in your life, but he wants to put little seeds of insecurity. Just doubt yourself. Do you really think you can ever be like that guy? I know you want to start streaming, but do you really ever think you can stream like this dude? I know you're thinking about being a pro gamer, but I mean, I mean, let's be serious, man. You're never going to be like that guy. You just don't have what it takes. And what I want to do over the next few minutes is I want to encourage you to understand that you don't need to be insecure if your identity is found in knowing Jesus, knowing who you are, who he's called you to be. Not believing what the world says about you, but believing what God says about you. And I want to read to you a story from a very, very famous person in the Bible. Many of you have probably heard him. He's from the very, very beginning. His name is Moses. And I want to encourage you tonight to believe the truth that you don't need to be insecure, but you can be secure knowing the fact that your identity and your trust is found in knowing Jesus, but also that even in our moments of insecurity, we're going to see that Moses had these moments, his conversations with himself and his conversations with God that you and I have both had. And even through that, God began to use him to do some amazing things. So I want to start reading Exodus 3. Ch uh, chapter 3, 1 to 15. Hey, if you're brand new and you don't even own a Bible, hey, I want to encourage you, you've come to the right place. We got it on the screen for you. So glad you're here with us tonight. Check it out with me. Moses. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Yes, like Jethro Gibbs from NCIS. Can I, get a, can I get a hashtag hype in the chat for all my NCIS fans? An amazing show. The flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Mildian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to a place called Horeb. This was the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord of God appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and it did not burn up. Now I want you to catch what Moses says here. So Moses thought, I will go over there and see this strange sight. I want you to remember that word strange. I will go over there and see this strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? I think this is so beautiful because Moses saw something. He saw a sight. He saw an individual. He saw a bush that he thought was a little bit strange. And because it was strange, it says he went over to see the sight. Moses is about to learn a very important principle that I want you to catch today, that just because something is strange does not mean that it's not of God. Now, I want you to catch that. Just because something is strange does not mean that it's not of God. Because I want you to realize the thing that actually attracted Moses, the reason Moses came over to the bush because he thought that thing is strange. I want to see more. That thing is strange. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit different than most things I've seen. And that actually makes me want to go over to it. It's the strangeness about this bush that is actually the reason that attracted Moses to it. There are things in your life that maybe people have labeled about your personality that are maybe a little bit strange, that are maybe a little bit weird, maybe a little bit out there. But there are things in your life that you might think are strange about you, that you think it's those strange things that are the reason that God can no longer use you in amazing ways in your life, when in reality, 
It's those strange things that actually qualify you to be used by God. It's the strange things about you. It's the things that make you extraordinary. Because if Moses had looked over that bush and there was nothing strange about it, but it was just another bush, Moses would have said, well, no, just another bush. Might as well keep on going until I find something that's going to catch my eye because that's just another ordinary bush. There are many of you where you want to you want to kind of squish down the things about you that make you different and you want to be ordinary like everybody else because you think if you can just fit in, if you'll just be ordinary, then God will finally use you. But it's actually the things that are different about you. It's actually the things that are strange about you that will actually attract people to you that will make them want to be around you, that will make them want to hear from you, that will make you someone who they will actually listen to speak about Jesus. Can I tell you there's some pretty strange things about me? If you ever met me for more than like seven and a half seconds, you'd realize that I'm kind of a weird dude, okay? I've got some strange personality traits, one of them that you just might know about, that I got a weird obsession with penguins, Okay, I'm that weird penguin dancing Jesus 11 kind of dude. Okay, I got one penguin. I got two penguin, three penguin. I got four penguin. I got I got five penguin. I got six penguin. I got seven penguin. I got a penguin cup and I got a hashtag no well penguins Remy in the cup. And that's just the penguins on my desk. Okay, I like me some penguins. And it's the strange things about me that people at times even enjoy to be around. We were super honored and privileged to have the Washington Post, one of the most prestigious and well-known newspapers in all of the globe, come to my house and literally sit three, four feet from where I'm sitting right now. And they wanted to do an article on us, my wife, and on God Squad Church. And there was a very specific moment that happened that day. Because she said, hey, I'm going to come over and I'm going to watch you stream. I'm going to record everything you say. I'm going to take notes and I'm going to watch closely. And she said this to me, I want you to be the truest version of yourself. I want you to do everything that you would normally do. I want you to do it in front of me. I said, lady, you might regret that decision. (laughs) But I said, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me and all my weirdness, me and all my strangeness. And then came a very special moment. The music began. My eyes looked over at the screen. I had realized that a donation had come in. And I was left with a decision that I was either going to make myself look sophisticated or I was going to make myself look really, really strange. And I decided in that moment, you know what? She said, be the truest version of yourself. And I said, man, things are about to get really weird. <laughs> and if you're in my room, she sits three feet directly to my right. And right in front of her on the floor is my penguin suit where I keep it. And can I tell you that I did the most anointed penguin dance the world has ever seen in Jesus name. Okay. Okay. And literally she came up to me after the whole night was over and she said that that penguin dance, I'm not going to lie. That was really weird and really awesome all at the same time. I said, thank you, Jesus, because it's the strange things about you that might actually be the reason that people are drawn to you. You don't need to be insecure about the weird habits that you might have. You don't need to be insecure about the strange personality traits because even after seeing my strangeness, that lady decided to write an article about us to God be the glory in one of the most prestigious newspapers in all the globe that became the number one trending story in the entire world in that day. But I didn't need to hide the strange parts of who I am. It was the strange parts of me that actually drew that woman to be here rather than me trying to hide who I am. And I've come to tell you today that you don't need to be insecure about the strange parts of you because it was the strange sight that actually drew Moses to going over to the bush. Because if it was just ordinary, if it was just another bush, Moses would have said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm busy tending my sheep. There's nothing worth gazing over here. And Moses went over to the bush and we pick up in verse number four. And says, Moses thought, I'll I'll go over and see the strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? And verse four, it says, when the Lord saw that Moses had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And I want you to catch this today. This was no accident. 
that the fact that God called Moses in this moment this was not some accidental moment where God had been in the, you know, he had been in the bush and maybe like you've seen in the movies, hello, hello, is, any, is anybody out there? God wasn't there by mistake and just Moses happened to be the first one to come by. God knew at that very moment that Moses would be walking with his sheep. And he said, I need to be at the right place at the right time so that I can call Moses by his name. You don't need to be insecure today. Because God wants to call you by your name. God did not create you with a cookie cutter model. God created you uniquely on purpose for a purpose. And if you understand that God has called you by name, he's chosen you specifically to be who you are, the way that you are. You don't need to be insecure. You can understand that God called me just the way that I am. Moses says, here I am. God says, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham. God is establishing repu reputation with Moses. I'm the God that did things for Abraham. I'm also the same God that get, did things for Isaac. Those stories you've heard? Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm that God. And just to put a little icing on the cake, also the God of Jacob. At this Moses, now he realizes this is the God I've heard about. He hid his face because he was afraid even to look at God because God was so holy. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. I want you to know today that God wants to use you. God wants to do things in your life, but not only for your benefit, but he wants to use you for the benefit of the people. God says, I've seen the misery of my people. I've heard their cries. And look what it says in verse number eight. So I have come down to rescue them. The things that God wants to do through you will always not just be a blessing for you, but a blessing through you so that you might be used for other people. So you can be confident in the fact that God is using me, not because I'm the most special person in the universe, but because not only God cares for me, but God cares about other people. I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good, spacious land, flowing with milk and honey at the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Susiites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you, God says. Moses, I've chosen you. I know we just met. Well, you just met me, but I've known you. But God, God said, I'm, I'm calling you out and I'm sending you to my people and bring them out of Egypt. At this moment, God has given Moses this incredible call, just as he's given you in your life. Although you may not have discovered it yet, God has an incredible purpose and a plan for your life. And when God presents that plan to us, we are left with a choice that we can boldly accept the plan and purpose God has for us, or we can fearfully decide to be insecure in denial that God has created us to be. And we're going to see Moses' response in verse number 11. Look what he says. But Moses said to God, who am I? God, I'm not good enough to do this. I'm just, I'm just, I, I just tend to sheep. I'm just Moses. God, there's no way that you could do all these amazing things that you're saying through a little guy like me. There, there's no way. He says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? But then God said, you don't need to be insecure because I will be with you. I will be with you. I want you to remember today that in the moments where you're feeling insecure, remember, you can be firm. Your identity is found in the fact that God is with you. That you might not think, man, I, I, I can't get through this situation that I've, I, I've got to go through. I, I can't pass this interview I've got to go to. I, I, I can't talk to this, this friend I've got to mend my relationship with. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be insecure because God will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. We're going to see God and Moses going back and forth and back and forth. And God is patient with Moses 
But Moses, time and time again, has moments of insecurity. Then Moses responds and says to God, Okay, well, you know, suppose I, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. But they're just going to ask me, like, what's his name? What shall I tell them? Like, I'm not very special, God. Like, if I go to these people, they're going to look down at me, be like, excuse me, uh, who are you? Uh, who, who's your boss? Because I, I mean, look at you, dude, you tend sheep. Like, how dare you come into my space? And there are times when that's how you and I feel about ourselves. Man, I mean, I can't do this because I'm just little old Matt. I'm just that weird guy that likes penguins. God, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not qualified to do this. I'm not strange. Can I tell you that in our own strength and in our own being, we aren't enough. But when God is with us, we are more than enough. Because look what God says. Moses said, what should I tell them? Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am who I am. That is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. That I am everything you need me to be. I am your courage. I am your strength. I am your wisdom. That you need wisdom on how to raise those kids. I am your wisdom. You need the words to say to be able to pass an interview. I am your wisdom. I am everything that you need. I am your strength to overcome this grieving process. I am everything you need me to be to overcome and to become and achieve all that God has created you to be. In our own strength, we might not be enough, but when you understand that I am is with you, that God is with you, you don't need to be afraid. And that even if you feel like, man, my, my salary's not big enough, my title's not long enough, I don't have what it takes to be able to do this, can I tell you that actually in some ways you're right? Because I don't have always what it takes. I don't always have the answers. But what I do have is I have God with me. And I can stand firm and look at every situation and say, I can do this. I don't need to be insecure because my identity is found in the fact that God is with me. God also said to Moses after God just responded with this great statement. God said, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham. Again, he's establishing that reputation. Hey, remember, this is, this is me. Like all those amazing things you've heard, I'm the one that did those things. Remind that of those people. Remind them that the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and the name you shall call from generation to generation. I've been around for a long time and I ain't going nowhere. I'm the God of all creation. That's the one who's going with you. Make sure you tell them that because they'll know me because they've seen me do some things. You don't need to be afraid, Moses. I'm going with you. And God, again, we see conversations of Moses' insecurity. And then God's security to him. Moses, you've been insecure. Here's the reasons you don't need to be insecure. Moses, again, being insecure. God, here's the reasons you don't need to be insecure. Picking up in verse four, the conversation begins. And God, we're going to see God continue to be patient with Moses. And it says, Moses answered again. But what if they don't, what if they don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? And what if they don't listen to what I say? And they'll say, the Lord didn't appear to you. And the Lord said to Moses, what's that in your hand? Moses, again, another moment of insecurity, another moment of fear, another moment of doubt. But, but what if, but God, what if, but God, but insecurity, what if they don't believe me? God said, what's in your hand? Moses said, I just got a staff. I got, I got a long stick. The Lord said, throw that on the ground. And he threw it on the ground. That quote, my dad's not a phone. Completely comes to mind. I digress. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground. And the staff, the stick, wooden stake, stick, like dead, not alive, right? Becomes a snake. And then Moses runs away from it. Because God did a miracle that no man could do. No human could turn a stick into a snake. There's just, there's just no room for debate there. Only God can do these things. God, again, is establishing if you're still afraid, okay, now let me give you some physical signs that are proof to you. The boss, man, the legend who's going to be with you. Throw your, throw your staff down. Turns into a, into a snake. Verse 4, the Lord said to him, reach out your hand, take that snake by the tail. So Moses reached out, took hold of the snake, turned it back into a staff. Staff goes to snake, snake goes back to staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that you might believe. So that you might believe. I'm doing these things, Moses, because I want you to believe that the Lord, 
the God of their fathers. Remember, I'm going to give you my reputation again. I'm going to give you my resume. The God of Abraham, those stories you've heard, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. How many times in our lives have we seen God do amazing miracles through other people, but we don't believe that he'll do them through us? God, I mean, I, I know you, I saw you do some amazing stuff through the God of Abraham and the God of Jacob and the God of Isaac. God, I saw you use them, but he, you can't use me. God says, I've done these things so that you might believe. You might believe. I want you to understand this important principle. That although we've discussed that insecurity is not a lack of integrity, but it is a lack of faith. And that we might not mean it intentionally, but to be insecure is to believe that God can't do things through us. I want to bring your attention to a verse that I want to encourage you to really make a mantra for your life. Hebrews 11, verse 6, before we jump back into that story with Moses. Look what it says. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want you to remember that. Take that as a mantra in your life. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. What does that mean? That our faith is pleasing to God, but our lack of faith is displeasing to God. That we might not mean it intentionally, but we have the ability to break God's heart when we lack faith. And you may never have thought about it this way. And I know that you might not mean it intentionally. And I don't mean it intentionally when I do it. But in those moments when we are insecure, we are lacking the faith to believe that God can do something through us, that we are who God said who we are. And when we say that we are something that God says we are, we say, God, no, what you said is not true and what I say is. God, I know that you said that I'm this, but in reality, God, I'm, I'm actually this. That when we are insecure and we don't believe God, I know I saw you do it through Jacob. I saw you do it through Moses. I saw you do it through them. But God, there's no way you could ever do that through me. I lack the faith to believe that that same power you did in their lives, that you could also do that through me. And in those moments of insecurity, I know we don't mean it intentionally. But insecurity breaks God's heart. And it breaks his heart because he knows that it breaks your heart. Because he doesn't want you to feel negatively towards yourself. He doesn't want you to feel insecure, not believing that you can achieve who he's called you to be. But it breaks his heart also because it lacks faith. Insecurity is not a lack of integrity. It's not a lack of character. But it's a lack of faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Impossible to please God. So Moses, God is saying to Moses here, Moses, I've done this so that you might believe. Moses, I just want you to believe that what I say is true. And that what I can use you, I really mean it. Don't, don't you know the things that I've, I've done? Don't you know who I am? I'm God. Do you still not believe? I believe that not only does insecurity break your heart, but I believe that it breaks God's. He says, Moses, I've done these things so that, that you might believe. But then in verse 6, he says, The Lord, Moses, because I'm patient with you, because I love you, I'll keep going back and forth with your insecurity. One more time, he says, The Lord said, Put your hand inside your cloak. Put it in your jacket pocket. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took his hand out, the skin was leprous, full of disease. It had become white as snow, and Moses starts freaking out. And now the Lord says, verse 7, now put it back in your jacket. Put it back in your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored perfectly like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to your first miracle, your first sign, then they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, 
I want you to take some water from the Nile, take some water from the river, and I want you to put it on dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. And I want them to see that. And God, over time and over time, is giving Moses things to be secure about. Things to be firm and believe that this is the God of who you are. And you can do those things through me. Not only does he speak to him, not only does it come to him in a bush that's literally on fire, but it doesn't burn. He gives him a stick that he turns into a snake. From a snake back into a stick. He turns his hand into a fully diseased one and then heals it again. And then he says, I'm going to turn water. I'm going to turn water into blood. And even after all that, Moses still doubts. And here's the real moments of insecurity. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, meaning saying, pardon me, God. I've never been eloquent. I'm not good at communicating. I'm not a good talker. Neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. This is a mistake and a lie that the devil wants to put in your mind to believe. Look what he says. I've never been eloquent. I've never going to been a good communicator before, neither in the past, nor check this, nor since you have spoken to your servant. Do you realize that Moses and God have been in a short-term conversation here? The whole story of reading is literally one conversation. And Moses says, I've never been a good speaker before or since we started our conversation. Therefore, I have room to be insecure. So many times in our lives, we expect to wake up the next morning and be good at what we feel God has called us to be. And if we're not, we say, oh, well, I guess, you know, overnight, I haven't developed the skills that I need for God to open up doors for me. So I guess I'm just not kind of out for this. Just because it doesn't happen overnight doesn't mean that we need to be insecure. Just because it hasn't happened in the past, just because it doesn't happen in a minute, doesn't happen through a long conversation. There are things that happen over time, but we don't need to fear. We don't need to be insecure because God is with you. Look what he said. God, neither in the past nor since I've spoken to you. He says, I'm slow of speech and tongue. God, I see all these amazing things you've done and, and I've seen your power. I think I'm beginning to believe the things that you can do but you can't do those things through me. I'm too slow to speech. I'm not a good talker. Look what the Lord says to him. Who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them the sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I, I will help you. You don't need to be insecure, Moses. I'm going to help you, and I'm actually going to teach you exactly what to say. I'm going to walk you through this. You don't need to fear. Back from the very first thing that God said to Moses, he said, I'm with you. I will help you and teach you exactly what to say. I know you got an interview this week. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to give you the words to say. I know you're trying to raise your kids. You don't know what to say to them. I'm going to give you the words to speak. I know you've got people that are counting on you, people that you're leading. You don't know how to lead them. It's okay. God's going to give you the words to say. God's going to teach you how to speak to them. And look at Moses' response. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. I don't have what it takes. I know that I know I know that God you want me to do this. But time and time again, God, I don't. I don't have what it takes. Like God, I'm just I'm I'm not your guy. Not because you're not powerful. Not because you're not the right God. But because I'm I'm not the right guy. How many times in our lives have we gone back and forth for two whole chapters? with God. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I can't. I'm not. I don't have what it takes. And and God continues to remind us time and time again. I know you don't have what it takes, but I'll give you what it takes. You don't need to be insecure because your identity is found in me. I am your strength. And if you believe that I'm with you, there's nothing you can't accomplish. But as I said before, I do believe that a lack of faith breaks God's heart. That God is so patient with us. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. And although we might not mean it, 
insecurity. It's not a lack of integrity, but it is a lack of faith. And God says in verse 14, Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He's already on his way to meet you, and he'll be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth, and I will help both of you speak, and I will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. Can I tell you that insecurity will be one of the major reasons that at moments we will miss out on opportunities that God has for us because we continue to doubt, continue to doubt, continue to doubt what God can do through us. We lack the faith to believe that God can come through. We lack the faith to believe that God, you can't do this through me. And I want you to remember this today, that insecurity will rob you because insecurity will take opportunities and give them to someone else that were originally intended to be yours. My wife and I had the incredible privilege to not only go to TwitchCon this past two weeks, but also to go to BlizzCon. If you don't know what BlizzCon is, it is a convention for all games made by Blizzard Entertainment. And it was incredible. And the day before BlizzCon happened, there was a special meet and greet with some of the people that are involved in BlizzCon, whether it's being at the convention or YouTubers, different things like that. We got to meet a lot of really cool people. But there was one person who I was super ecstatic to see that they were there. Now, for the purposes of our story, I'm going to leave their name out there with a lot of the details I'm going to give. You might be able to gauge who it is. It's public information on the knowledge, but for the safety and security and, and the privacy of their name, I'm going to leave it out. But it's a female who does a lot of hosting. And if you know me, I love hosting and commentating. And I'd love to even one day get in that world to be able to reach more gamers. But this certain individual was there and we got in their line. And I said, I want to ask them all about hosting and ask them all about how to do these kind of things. And I want to tell you that when I was in that line, I began to remember something that this person publicly on their Twitter had stated that they had just been through a really bad divorce. And I, I had spent some time praying for them. And it was in that line that I remembered this. And I, and I looked to a man and I said, honey, I, I I just remembered that she went through this really difficult time. And I really feel strongly in my heart that I need to mention to her, not only talking about you know, hosting, but also talking about God Squad Church and how we're a pastor and letting her know that I know you've been through a hard patch lately, but I want you to know that we've actually been praying for you. And if you ever need anything, we're here for you and God loves you. And I felt this so strongly in my heart. But then insecurity began to sink in. I began to think about her. I began to think about me and my wife. And this is a huge famous person. This is like the female face of Twitch. I'm just Pasha Susie. I've got like 90 viewers on Twitch and in the grand scheme to her, I'm, I'm a nobody. I begin to have conversations with myself like Moses, but they're not going to listen to me. I, I'm going to say that to her. She's going to brush it off. I'd be like, excuse me, who, who are you again? Yeah. Don't you have like 90 viewers? Don't you know that I'm the face of, I'm, I'm the female face of Twitch. And I begin to feel God in my heart. I want you to say these things to her. And I begin to be insecure. But God, she's not going to take them coming for me. It's, it, they're not going to happen. And, and as I'm fighting with myself internally, one more person is getting in line. And I'm fighting with myself internally, and I'm having those insecure moments, and one more person is getting closer in line, and we're getting closer and closer to the front, and I'm having these internal struggles in my moment. And finally, the next person, the last person, we're next. They take the picture, and we go up to her. We begin to talk about, hey, how'd you get into the hosting world? And I began to thank her. Hey, we appreciate what you do because my wife and I, we, we pastor a church for gamers. Oh, really? You started a church? That's really interesting. Tell me more. She's very, very engaged and she's, we're talking about the church and we're, we're on the subject of church and faith already. And insecurity took over my heart. And we took a picture and we went on our way. And as we went down the escalator, I was just beating myself up, man. Beating myself up. Man, I can't believe I let insecurity get the best of me. And we're walking out the hotel, and I'm, I'm, I'm having this inward struggle, and I'm talking to Amanda. I'm like, babe, I, I really felt like I should have said that to her. I, I, I can't believe I didn't say it. And she's like, well, do, do you want to go back? 
I mean, she's still got 15 more minutes of, of her meet and greet on her schedule. So do you want to go back? Yeah, I do. Let, let's go back right now. We begin to walk up the escalator. And we're about to turn the corner. I said, God, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to fail you this time. I'm not going to let insecurity. I know that I'm a small streamer, but it doesn't matter that I'm a small streamer because it's not about me. My identity is not found in me. My identity is found in the fact that you are going to be with me. My words are not just mere words, but you're going to give me the power and the spirit of God that when I speak to her, it won't come from the perspective of who are you. It'll come from the perspective of he's been sent by God and I'm feeling something different and I'm going to have this conversation. And we got up the escalator and I felt bold and I said, God, I'm not going to let you down again. And we turned in the room and we said, we still got 15 minutes. She's got to be there. And we just began to look around and look around and she was gone. I thought to myself, God, I've prayed and asked you for four years to give us incredible opportunities to be in things like national TV, which we've been on, like worldwide newspapers, which we've been on, not to make ourselves famous, but I've asked you, God, for four years to bring us to the top of Twitch so that we could, top, we could talk to the people at the top of Twitch, and you did. And I didn't do what I asked you. I asked you for these opportunities, and when you gave them to me, I let insecurity get the best of me. And we see Moses who goes back and forth with God. God, I know that you've spoken these things to me. I know that you've spoken to me. But insecurity has gotten the best of me. Can I tell you that when we miss opportunities, God loves you. God is patient with you. In verse 17, even after God Moses doubts God. God still says, I'm going to use you. But he says, Moses, look at what he says, but take the staff in your hand so you can perform the signs with it. God says, even after you've doubted me and even after I brought Aaron in to do what you wouldn't do, Moses, don't worry. I'm patient with you. I love you and I forgive you. And I'm still going to use you. But God doesn't just love Moses. He loves the Israelites. And he says, they're suffering and I need to save them. And Moses, if you won't let me use you to save them, I love you and forgive you and I'm going to keep using you. But if you won't let me give you this opportunity, I'm going to have to give it to somebody else. Because I love you, but I also love those people and I can't let them continue to suffer because of your insecurity. And in those moments when I said, God, send me to TwitchCon, put me in front of the most famous people on Twitch so that I can minister to them. Sometimes in our lives, when we miss our opportunities, God is patient with you. He's gracious with you. And God loves me and forgives me for missing the mark. But he also loved that woman. He said, Pastor Susie, I, I love you but I need her to be ministered to. And if you won't do it, I have to find somebody else who will. And I prayed for four long years for God to give me that opportunity. And I let insecurity get the best of me. And the one I want to speak to you today is to be bold and secure in who God's made you to be. Because in reality, I had nothing to fear. I had nothing to fear. God was with me. The words that I would have spoken to her were words not just of my own flesh, but words of the Spirit of God that's inside of me. But I let insecurity get the best of me. And I ask you in Jesus' name to learn from the mistake of Moses, to learn from my mistake, and to say, I understand that we're not all perfect, but to not miss opportunities that God gives your way. Don't let insecurity rob you of your opportunity and allow somebody else to take a situation that was originally intended to be yours. I've decided in my heart that God, I will not disappoint you again. That if you give me an opportunity, if you give me an opportunity, Lord, I will not let insecurity get the best of me. I will be 
bold. I will be firm in who you've called me to be. And when that window comes my way, I'm going to take it. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel ashamed. I feel God's grace upon me saying, I love you and I forgave you. But I needed her to be ministered to. And if you won't do it, I love you. But I got to find somebody who will because I don't just care for you. I care for her too. And I charge you today in the name of Jesus. Don't let insecurity rob you of the opportunities that God has for your life. Especially the ones that you've been asking him to give you. If you've been asking God to open a door and he opens it for you, don't let insecurity keep you from walking through. You can be and you can achieve all that God has created you to be. All that God has created you to be. You don't need to be insecure. Don't let fear cripple you. Don't let doubt keep you from achieving all that God has for your life. Because again, in verse 17, even when you miss the mark, even when Moses said, God, after all you've spoken to me, I am not your servant. Please send someone else. Moses said, okay. God said, okay, Moses. I wanted you to speak to my people, but I love my people to let them suffer. So if you won't speak to them, I will find somebody who will. But even after that moment, God says in verse 17, but Moses, don't worry, I still love you. Take the staff in your hand so you, so you can perform the signs with it. Even after Moses missed his opportunity, God says, but we're going to keep on pushing through. I know you might have missed the mark. I know you might not have done what you were supposed to do, but I want to encourage you. Even when you've missed your opportunity, God will give you more. It might not be with that same individual. It might not be with that same person, but God is in the restoring business. God will give you opportunity. And even when we have moments of insecurity, God will help you. What I wanted you to see today is that all along, Moses had nothing to fear. And what we see in this story is insecurity, God reaffirming him. Insecurity, God reaffirming him. And I want you to take the lesson of Moses, that we have nothing to fear. You have nothing to be insecure about because the power of God is living in you which means that you don't need to lack faith that says, I can't do this, but you can say, God, I can do this. Because I want you to know today that insecurity says, I can't, but faith in Christ says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Insecurity says, I'm not, but faith says, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. You are everything God has created you to be, and you can do everything that God has created you to do. The only thing is that you can't are things that you weren't created to do anyway. The only things that you're not are the things that you weren't created to be anyway. So we should never be able to say, I can't in a way that matters. Because here's the reality. There are plenty of things that I can't do. But it doesn't matter because I wasn't created to do them anyway. But the things that I was called to do, the things that I was created to do, if I rely on Jesus, if I realize that he is my identity, that I am not just Pastor Susie, I am Pastor Susie, chosen, calling, anointed, strengthened by God, which means I can accomplish all he's called me to do. Faith says I can't, I mean, sorry, insecurity says I can't, but faith says I can do all things. You might be telling yourself through insecurity that I'm not, but faith says I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. You are all he says you are. Do not let the world label who you are. Do not be full of fear. Do not be full of doubt. Do not lack faith that says, God, you can't do through me what you said you could. Choose to believe him today. That when you walk into situations of your life that you feel like you can't do it, here's what you tell the devil. You're right. I can't do it. But with God, I can. I have nothing to be insecure about. God has reminded me time and time and time and time again. I saw him do it through that person and ain't nothing special about that person and ain't nothing too special about me. Which means if God uses him, God's going to use me. And if we have faith in God, he will use you to change this world around you. You have nothing to be insecure about. 
the things that are strange and maybe a little bit quirky about you, I got plenty of them, baby, are the things that God actually wants to use to attract people to you so that you can minister to them, so you can be a blessing in their lives. The things that were strange about the burning bush are the things that drove Moses to it, not drove Moses away from it. Stop neglecting the things that are about you that are a little bit different than the rest of the world. God has created you just the way you are, on purpose, with a purpose. And we see in this conversation that even through moments of insecurity, that God still used Moses. I know you've had those conversations. I know I've had these conversations. Insecurity, insecurity. But time and time again, God reminds us we have nothing to be insecure about. We can overcome insecurity when you remind yourself, I am God's. I belong to him, which means that he will help me through every situation of my life, period. God is with me and not against me. God is for me. God called Moses out of the burning bush to show him that he could do anything and everything through him. Not because Moses had the strength, but because God had the strength. I want to leave you with one last thing that I want to encourage you with today that I believe God really spoke to my heart as I was reading and studying through this passage. And it's about that burning bush. And I believe in with all my heart that confidence, not in ourselves, but confidence in Christ, our confidence is like the fire that is inside that bush. Because when there's too little of a fire, or no fire at all, there's nothing special about the bush. It's just another bush. But if there's too much fire, the bush burns up. You notice that Moses said that what was really interesting about the bush was that it was on fire, but it didn't actually burn up. The bush didn't actually wither. It had just enough fire, not too little that it didn't make the bush uninteresting, but not too much that it didn't burn the bush up. It had just the right amount of fire. And in the same way, the fire is our confidence in Christ. That when we have too little, when we have too little boldness, too little faith, too little security in God, that the way we live our lives might just be a little ordinary. Then we have very little faith. There might not be things we're doing in our lives that draw people to us, that make us stick out to be world changers for God's glory. But when we have too much confidence to the point when it's in ourselves, we start believing that we are the reason in which we can do all that God's called us to do. Can I tell you that confidence is going to cause you to burn up? That confidence is actually going to be your downfall. But not when we have too little, not when we have too much, but when you have just the right amount of faith and confidence in Christ, the bush will never burn up. That your confidence won't be too little, it won't be too much, it won't be arrogant, but it won't be insecure either. It'll be just the right amount where God can use you to make a difference in the lives of people. And I challenge you today in Jesus' name to by faith, because without faith it's impossible to please God, but by faith to believe you are who he says you are, not who other people say that you are. You have nothing to be insecure about. I believe that there is nothing, nothing quicker that will sink your ship faster than insecurity. Because all these character flaws we've talked about, they'll sink your ship over time. But insecurity is an opportunity that's right in front of you. And it doesn't say no over time. It says no all at once. Insecurity says, no, nope, I'm not good enough to do that. Nope, I don't have what it takes to do this. Insecurity will rob you of opportunities that God has given you. And I challenge you in Jesus' name, believe who you are. Believe who God's called you to be. Stand firm in that process. He loves you. He cares for you. You are his child. Your identity is found in the fact that he loves you, that you belong to him, and he's giving you strength to endure and to do everything. Whatever situation you are facing in your life, I want you to remember, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength and I am more than a conqueror insecurity says I can't faith says I can insecurity says I'm not faith says I am more than a conqueror and if you're here today and you'd say I don't I don't have identity in, in Jesus because I just don't even know Jesus 
I've never really been around any kind of faith or any kind of explanation of who God is or God's love for you. And I want to encourage you the same patience that God had with Moses time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. God has had that same patience, compassion, and love and mercy with you for your whole life. And just like he called Moses in that bush, he called him by name, Moses, Moses. I believe that tonight God's calling you by name. Because since before you were ever even born, God loved you. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. And that emptiness that you're feeling in your life, that lack of purpose that you're feeling in your life, that maybe shame, guilt, and regret that maybe you're feeling in your life, can I tell you that Jesus wants to take all of that away. Jesus wants to change your life. And today, I want to encourage you, if you make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will never be the same. You not only have eternity in heaven, but God will give you purpose and peace today in your life. And we'd love to celebrate with you. We'd love to pray with you. And if that's you, we're going to have some people follow up with you and pray with you. But if that's you, I'd, I'd love for you to let us know just so we can celebrate with you by typing, I accept in the chat. If you've never made a decision to follow Jesus before, but today you're saying, I accept Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Would you let us know in the chat just by typing, I accept. But if you're here today and maybe you already know Jesus, and can I tell you that you've had moments of insecurity that I'll be honest, I have just recently, as you just heard. I want God to remind me that no matter how big or how scary the situation may, may seem, He is my strength. He is my source. And I can do all things. That they will listen to me, not because I'm special, but because God's speaking through me. That you can raise those kids. That you don't need to be like those parents. God created you to be your own parents. God created you to raise those children the way that you raise those children. God's going to be with you in that interview to give you the words to say. God's going to help you get that new job. God is going to be with you. God is going to be with you. God with you. God with you. And if you're here and you'd be honest, you've had moments or even right now you're facing a lifestyle of insecurity, then I want to I want to encourage you to type in the chat, hashtag I am symbolizing that I realize that I know the great I am is with me, but also I am who he says I am. I am who he says I am. And I want to encourage you that we're going to pray together. And I want to thank you so much. We've got a legendary person in the chat deciding to give their lives to follow Jesus. Can I tell you that we are so proud of you? Can we tell you that we are so proud of you making a decision to follow Jesus? I love it. I love it. Repentance, God, I want to encourage you. we got people that are going to follow up with you after the chat today. But I want to encourage you, all it takes is for you to make a decision and say, Jesus, I understand that I'm a sinner and that I need your forgiveness. And like you said right there, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. We're going to have people follow up with you, people pray with you. But I want to encourage you to continue in this journey of following Jesus as you've decided to do today. A lifelong decision. And I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with us that we're all going to pray together, asking God to help us to be secure in who he's called us to be. We need not be insecure because we have God on our side and he is with us. Let's pray together. God, we just come before you and we just ask you, Lord, to give us strength. God, to have faith to believe who you are. And to have faith to believe what you say about us. God, we've all had those conversations just like Moses. I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm not the right guy for the job. I, 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 can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. But I pray in Jesus' name that we would understand. Our identity is found in you. I'm not just Pastor Susie. I'm a child of God. They're not just Muy Bien. They're not just Servant Dave. They are a child of God. They're not just Maddie. They're not just Nova Souls. They are a child of God, which means they can do all things. They're not just a Porto. They're not just Babel Frazier. They're not just Jonkfer. They are a child of God. They're not just Colger. They're not just James James Croft. They're not just I'm Prepong. They are a child of God. They're not just Yufu. They're not just Lex Brig. They're not just PJMG. They are a child of God. They're not just Chicken Alfredo. They're not just Monastery. They're not just Apex. They're not just Rody. They are a child of God. And I pray in Jesus' name that God, you would help us to flee from insecurity right now and choose to believe 
even in the moments when we don't feel it, but choose to believe I am who he says I am. I am a child of God. I may not have all the things that I think I need, but if I don't have them, it's because I didn't need to have them. I might not have certain skills and I might not be able to do certain things. And if I can't, it's because I wasn't created to do certain things. I can't accomplish all you've called me to accomplish. I can be all you've created me to be. Help us to believe that we pray, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.